Hi there, and welcome to Reflections with Rhonda Jones and my co-host, Monica Livingston. And, of course, we have Kimberly Johnson. And I want you to introduce our special guest. And this is my mother, Kathy Willems. Thank you. I tell you what, it's very special to have Kathy. We've asked her um, a few times to do some uh, video stuff, and we just haven't uh, got right to it. And um, she was so gracious to say, yes, I want to participate. And we're so thankful to have her. I'm so very pleased to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Always, always. Okay. Um, she was like, "What are we going to talk about? What, what you know? What?" Yeah, she was excited. Yeah, yeah. she was <laughs> very excited. And I said, "Sometimes the best thing is you just don't know what we're going to talk about." I mean, we might know, but it's best if you don't know sometimes. <laughs> but you won't back out, <laughs> um, right? Sometimes uh -huh. it gets a little dicey, but uh, she can roll with the best of them. I hope so. Thank you. Oh, I know you can. I know you can. Uh, we're going to start right off with um, something I, I wanted to bring up was everybody knows, hopefully, or not hopefully, but that the Iron Lady, Margaret Thatcher, passed away, I think, last week or the week before, and a lot of people were not big fans of Margaret Thatcher, um, definitely in the United Kingdom, um, for one reason or another. They have their, their reasons. But I was, I was very disappointed to see that a lot of people are actually celebrating her death. Yeah. You know, it's one thing to, you know, be um, not approve of somebody's stances politically or financially or whatever, but then when you celebrate the death of someone, you know, that ha has given service to her country. And in a lot of ways, she turned some things around. And um, I don't know, I was very disappointed. Uh, Kathy, what do you think about that? Well, I kind of had the same re uh, reaction to it. She did so much for her, that country. Mm -hmm. And that, in, in effect, affected the United States. They were and are still our best ally. I think she had brought her nation from where it was to a, a level of uh, evenness with with the United States. Mm -hmm. And I, I just don't like the idea of somebody being happy over anyone's death, sure. um, yeah. e even if they're weren't her favorite. That's true. <laughs> you know, they still need to at least not make a demonstration right. out of that. You know, of course, that being said, Kimberly, you know, we have these rights to, you know, demonstrate or protest or give our expressions, our opinions. Um, and we can't take that away from people, but no, but we don't have to approve of it. That's right. We, <laughs> That's right. There's a I have a right to disagree. Right, and I don't, I don't know a whole lot about Margaret Thatcher. I'm ashamed to say, when I was young, I thought she was the queen of England because <laughs> no. she's so, she's so strong, you know. Yeah. yeah. I thought, but, so, but I can't imagine celebrating the death of anyone, even someone who's a horrible person, much less someone who did her best, as far as I understand, for her country mm -hmm. and served her country to the best of her ability. It's true. Right. It, it, exactly. And, and that's the same thing that you read about and you hear about when you have uh, instances like when Osama bin Laden, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, yeah. and you hear or the guy that had the kid hostage in Alabama, mm -hmm. you know, when you hear about the death of an individual, um, there should be something in you that, you know, realizes that that person had a life. Um, they may have made a lot of wrong choices. They may have really screwed up. They may have... Um, done some things that set people back or they could have just all out done something that harmed another person and or or many people but they still were a brother to someone a father to someone a son to someone and they were a child of god if you believe mm -hmm. in god and if not they're just a fellow human being you know um and we shouldn't celebrate i don't think the the taking of a life or the loss of a life through natural causes or diseases or whatever. I just think that that it's sad to celebrate, you know, the end of someone's life like that. You know, I mean, celebrating someone's life, mm -hmm. not their death. Yes. You know. So. That's true. And, and the point you made about their, you know, they have surviving family members and a loss is a loss, you know, human loss of right. life. 
um, affects a family. And so, you know, show a little respect, um, a little couth, you know. That That's my two coppers, um, right. as we say. Well, if around you don't want to go to a funeral and, and mourn, I just keep quiet. You know, right. Just not like, nothing nice to say. Don't say nothing at all. Yeah. Just like this huge like parade and, and they made, you know, effigies of her and yeah. yeah. You know, really, honestly, um, mm-hmm. like when I found out Osama bin Laden was killed, you know, in my heart at first I thought when that day would come, I would be happy, sad to say. I thought I would at least show some relief, but I didn't. I, I said, you know what, it's a life that more than likely was wasted and and it could have been more productive and you know, it's a waste. Mm-hmm. And so as all humans, I don't know, we need to show a little more kindredness than, mm-hmm. than that. So I don't know, I, I'm gonna give a, in the memory of a, you know, movie critic, Roger Ebert, I'm gonna give two thumbs down on celebrating Margaret Thatcher's or anybody's death mm-hmm. or anybody's death like yeah. that okay kimberly you have a very interesting subject to bring up uh yeah that was this interesting to me because i do homeschool my children will turn on my kindle so i don't misquote something um the it's a family who uh sought a- asylum in the united states from germany because they homeschool their family in germany homeschooling is illegal and they came here to the country through legal means, uh, applied for asylum. Uh, the, the law in Germany to ban homeschooling was a law that was in, uh, put into effect during the Nazi regime. And the reasoning, according to the article here, was to eliminate um, multiple religious and philosophical beliefs and to eliminate the creation of a subculture or minority culture within the German culture. And so homeschooling, even even private schools in Germany have to teach the public school curriculum. Wow. So there is no differentiation. And this family, they are a Christian family, but they didn't seek political asylum on a religious basis. They they sought political asylum because of persecution as a social entity, homeschooling Germans. Uh, they were granted asylum. The, the judge, um, the immigration judge ruled that the denying them the right to homeschool was a violation of their human rights and that this Nazi, he, he quote him, this Nazi law was being imposed upon them and granted them asylum. While they were in Germany, backtrack just a little bit, they had um, been fined several thousand euros. I don't know what that translates to, but it doesn't sound good. Mm-hmm. Um, they had had their children forcibly taken from the home and hauled to public school in police vans. Oh my goodness. They had been threatened with the loss of custody of their children. Mm. And as I said, they, they gained asylum in the United States, were granted asylum, and had lived here for several years when the um, Homeland Security and the Attorney General decided to overturn the decision, saying that since the law in Germany applies equally to everyone, that they can't have asylum because it's not a you know being persecuted one one group over another it's an equal law which the homeschooling family says it does persecute a minority homeschooling families <laughs> right um so they are their trial is set they've appealed the decision to you know appeal the decision to be deported they were supposed to be deported and uh, their trial is set for april 23rd this month mm-hmm to see whether they can overturn the decision that overturned their being allowed to stay in the United States. Um, I mean, aside from what it's impacting them, it concerns me for homeschoolers in the United States. If, if our courts are going to decide that homeschooling is not a right that parents in other countries have, you know, what's the next step? That's true. Uh, anyway. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, um, Kathy, what, what, what's your gut instinct about this? Well, it's kind of a personal thing because my daughter was homeschooled and she also attended uh, regular public school. I believe that a homeschool is so awesome for the parent and child. Um, they build 
tremendous relationships with, with dads or moms or whoever's teaching. And it, it also, they can teach the spirituality that our public schools are not even able to mention anymore. And, and I like that aspect of it. I, this couple, I don't, I don't see how they can change their status from <clears throat> being uh, assured of staying in America and now having to be deported, or they're trying to deport. Um, I would need to be in much prayer for this couple and their children. Okay, Momo. Well, you know, um, Kimberly and I were talking about it a little bit earlier, and, um, you know, my reaction was that, you know, for all the reasons that people do come to America um, and all the ways that they do, you know, there's a lot of illegal immigrants that come and they work and they collect benefits there. I mean, there are people here, you know, illegally that do collect benefits, but they don't pay anything into the government. And then you have a family that went through legal means to actually come here for the safety and stuff of their family because let's put it bluntly if your kids are being forcibly removed from your home and taken you know to school against your wishes and their wishes you know that's kind of a scary and traumatic thing for your children to go to and as a parent you would want to protect your children so they went through these legal means to to do this whether you agree with homeschooling or don't agree with homeschooling or whether Mm -hmm. you choose it or don't choose it if the parents want to do it and they can you know and they are feel they're able to i feel that you know it should be a right now like you said this is a, a law from back in you know nazi 38 regime. or something like and that. so you know why not revisit it why not look and see if you know but this country is deciding not to do that but coming in and taking your children because i mean basically they don't want them to to think any other way but one way and we all know, you know, how damaging that can be. Yes. So, you know, I mean, I look at it from that standpoint. I mean, they went through legal means. They're not here illegally. Exactly. You know, mm-hmm. and they're trying to protect their family, and they're trying to allow their children to have open minds and to think more than just how they're told yeah. to think. So, You know, with, um, <clears throat> I mean, my goodness, you know, 1938 was such a, long time ago it was in another era of uh you know where you had this um maniac that wanted so many things that were unproductive to the whole world much less his country and the the law is so old i would think it would have been revisited way before now and it doesn't even sound like it's being revisited at all at this point and you know, if we could do anything, it would be, and how do you force another country to revisit, you know, their right. laws? But, you know, we are a country that that does accept people under certain types of um, asylum, and I'm thankful for that. And I think Kimberly mentioned about they didn't want to set a precedence. This is the first family to seek um, political asylum based on homeschooling, and they're afraid that it's going to set a president will be flooded with homeschooling families from <laughs> that, Europe. Oh no! Yeah, <laughs> that, that's crazy. what I was thinking. I, I, I was thinking kind of the same thing. This is just a test case. Mm. We do yes. not know how many other families are here under similar and, circumstances. And that would be a way to convince a government to possibly revisit a law if, if mm-hmm. we allowed asylum for this reason, and other families began leaving the country for that reason it would put the government in a position of saying maybe we need to rethink this. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a little ignorant on, a lot ignorant on some of these laws, but why not, like, if you have to go back, go back and just say, you know what, I've decided to move to the United States. <laughs> I mean, I don't, you know, you can have dual citizen, citizenship and you can do this and that. Why not just come here and say, uh, you know, we want to live in the United States. I don't know if, it, you know, some countries won't let their people, you know, have citizenship in another country. Well, it sounds like if they go back, there's a good chance that their children won't just their be, children will probably be removed, removed from, from the home to take to school, but removed from the home, period. You know? Yes. No. And for all the reasons that a child should be removed from home, I don't think because the parents are choosing to educate them 
in a different way than the public school system is necessarily a reason to remove a child. You know, I mean, if the child's in danger and harm, you know, they're being abused, you know, there's ton being neglected, not being fed, taken care of, their medical, you know, needs not being attended to, but because their parents are choosing to educate them themselves. Right. I think I'd be packing my bags and yeah. trying to find another country if this country's not going to play ball with them either. So, and that's sad. a sad scenario. Yes, that we do support, uh, give asylum to aliens. You know, they come from illegally. The, yeah. Mars. Illegally, yeah, we do accept those without question or comment. What's the difference with this one case? Yeah, that has brought it to this much uh, attention. There's some backstory that we probably don't, don't know, know all the ins and outs on, but we, you know, and for, with Kimberly homeschool and her children, and to see how the United States treats uh, the importance of homeschooling, um, this is going to be probably a landmark thing mm -hmm. for, you know, people. And so yeah, it is. It's it's scary for those that that do want to homeschool whatever country you're in so let's just keep our eye out and see what we can do about it all right momo do you give us your your pinterest we haven't had a pinterest uh tip in a long long time um i came across this and it was just you know now's the time for spring cleaning a lot of people are like going through their home and you know cleaning blinds and curtains and you know just top to bottom you know Typical really? spring cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that people too? It's not for me. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, you know, going through closets and getting rid of clothes that don't fit and getting, you know, or changing out. Like a lot of people change out their clothes for spring and summer versus fall and winter and pack up the sweaters, jackets. I'm glad we don't have to do that here in, in Florida. <laughs> we never <laughs> know what it's going to be. One day it's going to be warm, one day it's going to be That's right. And yeah, generally year round, we can just add a layer and we're all right. <laughs> But uh, it says every couple months, and I thought, you know, right now while you're spring cleaning, this might be a good tip. It says every couple months, sprinkle a mixture of baking soda and a tablespoon of your favorite powdered fabric softener and um, spread it over your mattress, let it set for an hour, and then vacuum it up. It gets rid of dust mites and freshens up the mattress. And then it says you can keep the same mixture in a mason jar with holes poked in the top of it um, in your linen closet or your clothes closet to help keep from getting like a musty, you know, mm. smell. Kind of just keep the air fresh in there. So just a little tip. Might give it a try. See how it works for you. Yeah. I mean, you used to be able to, before the uh, advent of the pillow top mattress, you could flip them and swish them and whatever. But now uh, you're pretty much stuck with, you know, the... The, the ditches and the canals in your mattress. <laughs> so, I'm just buy a new one. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> or, the you cost were, of those. Yeah, you were days. fortunate enough, you and your, your man, uh, y'all bought a, a new mattress recently. Yeah, well, and, when you have springs poking through and about, about to cut your legs, it's about time to get a new mattress. And so. it was the first one we'd ever purchased. You know, we'd had one given to us. and Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you know what? Um, uh, Monica and Joey have uh, had a milestone uh, anniversary recently, 10 years. And I tell you what, um, they had a great weekend. And I want you to talk a little bit about it, your weekend and how your husband surprised you. <laughs> she wants so to cry sweet. on the air. <laughs> um, well, we, we just talked about what we were going to do. And um, he had went out and surprised me, little to my knowledge. Um, but we, we decided we were going to kind of spend the weekend together and uh, my mother-in-law and father-in-law were so wonderful to watch our babies and so they had the grandkids for the weekend and um, of course we've got a car full of stuff now <laughs> to take home <laughs> they like to go garage sailing and the kids uh, racked in <laughs> a load of stuff <laughs> um, but we walked through downtown Pensacola and took in the sights and the sounds. Um, there was like a reggae fest going on, so we were able to listen to a little bit of reggae music and walk through some art galleries, and I happened to spot this pretty pendant. It's gorgeous. And my husband got it for me. And um, later we decided to go to dinner at a local restaurant here in McGuire's Irish Pub. 
and uh, very great food if you ever come to Pensacola. It's not something you you know most people can afford to go to often, um, and it had been quite quite a while since we'd went. Um, so we went, we had a nice dinner, and at dinner he hands me a box, and he says, I got you a little something. Well, I'm shocked. I'm like, wow. You yeah. Know? Not that he floored. never does anything for me, but, you know. Let's be honest. It was a jewelry box, okay? <laughs> um, uh, I haven't had jewelry in a while. <laughs> don't, don't cover for him. <laughs> so anyways, I take the box, and I open it up, and it's this pretty little heart pendant, and I'm like, oh, how cute. And I said, is cute. it a locket, or, 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 or this is pretty, or I don't remember my exact words, but I liked it. I thought it was very nice and How sweet. How come you didn't wear it today? I like this one, and I wanted to wear this one. It okay, matched better or, or didn't match, you know, the color. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um, but it's also something that's engravable. Oh, okay. I, I thought it was a locket, but it's a it's a little pendant, heart pendant, and it's engravable. And I liked it, but he was obviously like, you're disappointed, aren't you? And I'm like, why is he? You know, no, I'm not disappointed. I like it. It's nice. And, and uh it turns out he had gotten that along with the purchase of something else that he got me. And what he'd gotten me was a journey ring, which represents the past, present, and the future. Sadly, I don't have it on today because they had to resize it, and I'll have it Wednesday. So oh. next week I'll get to show it off. <laughs> but, I mean, he just really floored me. He handed me this other box. He says, maybe you'll like this one better. And I'm like, what, really? <laughs> oh, my God. And then I opened it up, and I just you know, started crying. And. You know, it's just really sweet that, you know, and and he, I, I said, maybe I didn't get you anything. I got him a card. I really didn't know what to get him. Then he pointed out, you know, there's been other things that I've gotten recently, you know, and, and he says, and it's nice for me to be able to surprise you because there's been past Finally. anniversaries where, yeah. you know, I've gotten something and maybe he hasn't felt like he could do it in secret because of, yeah, you know. Yeah, sure. So. Sure. Yeah, but it was wonderful. We had a good time. I tell you what, that was so sweet, and and he didn't even tell us. I mean, it was that big of a surprise. I guess he thought I would spill the beans or something. <laughs> but um, I tell you what, my husband really got. Uh, I gave him the breeze because I was like, yeah, and and Ricky got Kaylee a Kindle for Christmas and surprised her because she wanted it, and then <laughs> Joey's in, and I said I don't get crap ever like <laughs> surprised, you know, and so so I really. <laughs> You know, Late Christmas. Christmas could help you. Yes. Well, I, so far, uh, oh, it hasn't yet. Okay. That's right. But yeah, I was like, wasn't that sweet that you know, if the wife mentions something like, oh, it would be nice to have something like this, then they they think about it and they you know conceive in their mind to get it for them, so they'll be happy and surprised. Isn't that nice? You know, and so I, I've really given him a hard time about that and. Uh, what Joey did. You can did, send so. your text to <laughs> <laughs> 741. <laughs> so, uh, I'm bad. Ooh. So, but that was so sweet. And, uh, Kelly, it's nice to be surprised every now and again, right? Oh, it is. I, I live alone. I'm not in any relationship. And even being alone, it's great for somebody to just put in a special phone call. Yeah. or just to stop by they were in the neighborhood and and those simple things mean as much as the things we've been given uh, by spouses or boyfriends or whatever right. and um but i i think um i lost it um well like like if you now say it's your birthday and somebody gives you something you you almost expect yeah. something which reminds me, uh, Kimberly, uh, I haven't forgot your birthday, even though no, you were out of town. But I okay. forgot my well, birthday when me, I was out of town. Let me, put, <laughs> but, <laughs> let me for, plug for no in reason. here. Yeah. Mine's coming up August 10th. <laughs> 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 <There you go. laughs> I'm looking for a good uh -oh. birthday there this go. year. Kimberly, right. so. I heard her. See, now that's a hint. And whoever <laughs> listens, you need to take these hints. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, but like when you expect it is one thing, but then just out of the blue, I mean, that's sweet. Yeah. And, and I know you just had, you didn't expect nothing. You expected it. No, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> no, you, you expected y'all to have a good time together and, but, but right. you know, it, it was out of the blue. Let's be honest. Right. Well, most of our anniversaries, we've just, uh, you know, decided not to worry about spending the money on each other, but just spending the time together. Um, our very first anniversary, we made each other something. Um, and 
we made each other like he made me this uh it was like a, a piece of my own piece of beach and he put my initials in the sand momo and jojo and mm-hmm. um put shells in it and he had crafted this on it like a piece of board and you know put sand in there modeling clay and it just made this really nice thing and i made a stepping stone with that had livingston's in 2003 and then you know, so we, we made each other something, and I think for so sequent anniversaries, we've just gone somewhere or spent time with each other um, by ourselves and, and really not really had gift gifts for each other. Um, and if it was a gift, it was something little. You know, it wasn't something like some major gift or anything. Right. And he's like, I can't believe for 10 years you didn't think I was going to get you anything. But I think he was pleasantly surprised that I had no idea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no that idea. Sweet. That was sweet. Well, speaking of Germany, uh, you have another, um, you have another article. I do. Yeah, um, concerning that. Let me pull it up here really quickly. There was an article on Yahoo. Um, a teacher in New York gave her students um, assignment for them to do an essay it needed to be five paragraphs long with an introduction three body paragraphs containing your strongest arguments and conclusions and she says you do not have a choice in your position you must argue that the jews are evil and use solid rationale from government propaganda to convince me of your loyalty to the third reich and this was the assignment that she gave her students um it said a third of the students decided not to do the assignment. Wow. And they were asked to watch and to read Nazi propaganda, then pretend their teacher was a Nazi government official who needed to be convinced of their loyalty. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were to, to required to prove that the Jews were the source of Germany's problems. Um, I believe that the update on that is that she's been suspended um, what do y'all think? <laughs> mm. Wow. Um, high school students? They were yes. high school students. High school yes. students. Okay. I can, I can see wanting to study Germany and I can see having the kids learn their position. Um, I took debate. You wouldn't know, but <laughs> as, as a, as against it as I am, but um, when you debate, you're, you're told to learn your position and learn the opposition's position. Right. Um, my husband gave me some great advice. When you believe you're right, do everything you can to prove you're wrong, to strengthen your position. So I can see studying Nazi Germany. I can see reading the propaganda. I don't understand the essay assignment. What was the point? I well, don't she said that, you know, with... Uh, and I know this is true that um, across the United States, they're going to basically a common core curriculum um, on how they how they do certain things such as math and reading and you know I believe those are the main t- math and you know language arts is basically the two areas that it's involved in now um, and the states do have a choice in accepting this common core coming up with something of their own but I don't think that it dictates the topics that you yeah, talked about was, yeah, that, why and this so topic? this was the topic she chose i guess um or decided to do maybe because they were studying about germany and about the third right but I, I, if they're going to write about it i would maybe let them have the choice in you know what do you see as the point that you would most argue would you argue this or would you argue that or you know, based on everything you know. Right. Yeah, I mean, but just telling them, hey, pretend I'm a Nazi official and basically kind of like you have to prove this because, you know, yeah. one article I read on it said that, you know, pretend your life depended on having to convince me that you were in full support of the Third Right. Mm. Mm. Kathy, I mean, really? <laughs> I can't see it. Right. I, I think the assignment... Uh, was something that maybe the teacher wanted to create some debate over. Yeah. Um, but I can't see teaching uh, or having them write a theme paper, basically, 
uh, on a subject that's um, still mm -hmm. so, uh, so important to our nation and to us. Um, yeah, I want our kids to have knowledge of that, that error, time frame, um, but let them just see it in, in its correct um, situation, percep perception. Yeah, I know you're saying like um, in its historical setting, right. right, it's like the, you know, war between the states, you know, it's something that happened, it's something that um, we talk about because we try to learn from, you know, if there were mistakes made, if there weren't, and the same with this, it's a historical fact that this happened, regardless of what some people think. <laughs> Who was that? Uh, um, was it Ahmadinejad or, or one of them said that the Holocaust never happened? Yes. But, yeah. um, you know, when you read it from the article in my mind, I thought, well, that doesn't sound too bad. Um, but then when I got to thinking, well, what's the very purpose of this? Exactly. Yes. You know, to do to do something mm -hmm. and take an opposite view, like Kimberly was saying, is good sometimes because you do see how ridiculous an argument is or how ridiculous what somebody's point was. But what are these kids going to take away, right. you know, from this exercise? Um, maybe if she would have framed it like this, um, you know, Obviously, they know what happened, but say, you know, well, I, I can't even justify that. Well, I mean, that. And, and mm -hmm. as a parent, you know, if my child was going to be giving something um, to do that was this controversial, um, I would think that I would want the parent, I mean, the, if I was the teacher, that That's I would true. I would say to, or you know, to the parents, hey, look, this is something I'm proposing to do with the kids. They're going to have a choice to whether they can do this assignment or not do this assignment or do it from this perspective or do it from this perspective or do this one or choose another one, you know? Right. But information, but just to put it out there to the students and, you know, and some parents aren't going to care. They're just like, oh, right. yeah. <laughs> you know, but the majority of parents, well, I say the majority, but a lot of parents do care and, you know, it seems like there's no real value in them arguing <laughs> that the Jews are evil and they're the cause right. of Germany's problems, you know? Yeah, that's, um, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, I could see writing an essay all about what the stance of both sides was, you know, and really giving their thoughts on what they had learned um, in the essay, but... It, this just I don't know I just I don't see a benefit to it I think it was no. big 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 mistake no, no. Yeah. <laughs> and and the poor teacher and she could have had just and, and I would give her the benefit of the doubt and say she had you know uh, good intentions <laughs> yeah well she had that but she had a, a you know in her mind it sounded like a good idea <laughs> you know sometimes we yeah. come up with these ideas and in our minds that sounds like a really good idea but when you bounce it off other Somebody people. Else the rest of the country. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right. The rest of the country. What happened to the one third that refused? Good um, question. I yeah. don't know. I think that maybe it was brought to attention before you know mm. it went too far. Maybe Hopefully. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'd like to read up on it further and see. But when I saw the article, I was like, "Whoa, okay." Yeah, too yeah. soon mm -hmm. for sure. Okay, you have another thing, sort of in the same vein, I would think. It's a little controversial. Um, yes, and it was about a dad who opened up his kid's backpack, and he's actually from Florida, and his fourth grade son had a paper written in crayon that has the words, I am willing to give up some of my constitutional rights in order to be safer or more secure. Um, and when he read them, you know, he wondered what was going on, and he asked his son. His son said that his teacher had told them to write these, the statement down and had told all the kids to do it, and he asked several other families that he knew their kids about it, and they, they all got the same thing, that it had come from the teacher. And he started to contact the school about it, but he kind of felt like, 
and I think maybe possibly, this is just me inserting, that he might have had dealings or there might have been something else from the school previously um, that would at, caution him to do this. But he sent, he just didn't contact the school about it, but he notified the newspaper. Mm. I think that he didn't want it maybe to just be swept under the rug. Um, and so he, con he you know, wrote his email of you know, what he thought about this to the newspaper. And apparently the, there had been other parents who had concerns in January because the lesson was, uh, had happened in January. And what had happened is that a, a lawyer or somebody had went into the school to help the kids and talk to the kids about the Bill of Rights. And then the teacher had therefore went forth into her classroom and said, hey, write this down, and then gave this statement. And the dad's argument is that, um, you know, the kids are going to their to be educated. And if you're going to educate them about the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and stuff like that, when was it drafted? Why mm -hmm. was it drafted? What were the revisions? When was it ratified? That's what you're teaching the kids. Right. Not mm -hmm. to have a particular political or religious view of things. Mm -hmm. And um, because kids are very impressionable. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I remember yeah. my daughter coming home from school and talking about how you know, they were, they're going to do like a mock election at school and a lot of them are. But in that case, a lot of times you have teachers who will just say, oh, well, you don't vote for this president because or this person for president because of this. And then they'll say, you know, why you shouldn't vote for them, you know. And uh, they're inserting their personal, mm -hmm. you know, opinions about this. Or, and, you know, and then again, notifying the parents, hey, we're going to be talking about this. Discuss it with your child and then have your child come to school and maybe discuss it with the class. Then everybody's opinions can be heard. But when you have a teacher that's standing up there and they're in a position of authority and the child, you know, is respecting this teacher or looks up to this teacher and the teacher says, oh, don't vote for Obama because, you know, he's this and he's that and he's, you know, for this and he's not for that. And, you know, right. or, you know, give up your gun rights because, you know, I mean, it's just... There's a lot of area to really overstep what's supposed to be going on. That is true. That is true. Kathy? Um, <coughs> excuse me. I can't think. Okay. I got you. <laughs> well, you know, I was going to say about this thing, um, and this isn't the point that you're bringing up, but I'm saying I probably would give up some of my constitutional rights if it would make me safer or my family safer or my right. community safer because I'm not this person that says, um, you know, oh, I've got the, we've got the right to this and then that and that, but you're giving up safety and you're giving up security and things like this. Right. You know, some of those things were written a long time ago. Right, and and I, I tend to agree there there is probably room for going back and looking at some things that are written into law and, and making changes, such as in the case of what happened in Germany and, or is happening exactly. in Germany. Um, but to, to teach the kids and to, to you know, give like one point of view, right. you know, mm -hmm. without allowing that child, the children, to have all different points of view. Yeah, because this is more of the, the knowledge provision years where you're giving them information and information right. information and as they get older this is only a fourth grader and not to not to keep them suppressed or, or dumb at this age but later on they'll be able to take that knowledge and make hopefully choices, informed right. decisions and good choices right. and Kimberly well you know you, this yeah, is I what you teach grader. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and my son is in fourth grade and, and and they do parrot these years and you know he'll he'll say he told us the other day he didn't like Obama and we said why because we don't want him to parrot us. And mommy doesn't like him, so I don't. It's not an acceptable answer. And, you know, I know he's, he's only 10, 9, fixed to be 10. But he, he needs to be given not just my opinion, but why I feel like I do and why other people feel differently. And we don't feel like he's too little to hear more than one side of something. Mm -hmm. And I certainly wouldn't want someone dictating their beliefs to my child and having them write it out in crayon. Yeah. You know, I, I think the teacher overstepped her bounds. 
What's up with these teachers lately? Well, mm-hmm. I think a lot of times teachers don't mm-hmm. think about um, just what comes out of their mouth, I guess. <laughs> you know, people in general don't. Um, you know, you can be walking down the street with your child and someone next to you is having a conversation and they have full rights to have that conversation and we talk about whatever they want to talk about. But when they're in a public, you know, situation and other people can hear it, especially young children, you know, you don't want them talking about what they've done in the bedroom, you know. Um, And a teacher, you know, sometimes will, you know, be thinking, hey, you know, this is, you know, a way to think about it. But, you know, or this is the way I think about it. But they don't think about the fact that these kids do form opinions based on things around them. That is true. Well, and see, I think she thought that out and did it on purpose. But <laughs> she might have. <laughs> it's, just too, it's just too, it's too pointed. And there's too many other things you could have dictated, you know. The yeah, of, I mean, it like could have been, father said, are the you willing was to? was established here. What's the, you know, what, why was not, not this is the way it is. I'm going to give up my rights for this. Yeah, it could have been, you know, are we willing to give up yes, some of our would constitutional have even been rights, fine, you know. Sure. Right. And st- yeah, it's almost like under duress, the child had to write down, "I will give up my constitutional <laughs> rights." That's what it makes me yeah, think. Yeah, makes you think they want to you know, <laughs> sabotage our own government. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Exactly right. Well, yeah. you know, gun control is such a, a hot mm-hmm. button topic right now, and um, what I what I really don't understand is. Who, and this is, sounds very one way and opinionated. Well, that's it. That's what it is. One way and an opinionated. But who in the world would not want stricter background checks? I mean, who cares? If you want the gun, why wouldn't you be willing to have a more stringent background check that you can pass, you know, because you're sane and you're this and you're that, responsible, but yet you're kind of, you know, filtering out some of those that are insane and irresponsible. What is such a, a big deal? And, you know, if if you have a difference of opinion and you can tell me what the big deal is about this, these more background, more in-depth background checks, I'd like to hear it because maybe I'm not thinking about everything. It just seems like I'm, you know, simplifying it, but whatever. What's, what's the deal? Well, I think, check. I think a lot of people that, that argue... It, this is just my two coppers, as you would say. But a lot of people that argue for, you know, these are my rights, and what right do you have coming in and telling me I can't own a gun because of this or because of that, or that people need to go through these stricter things that want to own a gun for whatever purpose they want to own a gun. They're removed from the situation, so to speak. True. You know? Yeah. Um, they, they're only focused on their rights, but they're not thinking about the rights of, the children that have no choice in whether some madman breaks into their school and shoots them up, mm-hmm. you know, because he's has access to guns that somebody else has, or he gets his own. Um, and, you know, stricter checks to be able to, to keep children safe that don't have a choice, you know, I mean, yeah, you know, give it up a little bit. I mean, I think we just get into this rut that, you know, I have the right to this and I, you know, I shouldn't be told this and that. I think everybody needs somebody in their life to tell them what to do and to, to, to govern. I'm, you know, I'm not about a, a big government, but I am, we've got to be governed because sometimes we get off base, you know, yeah. we go kilter. Now our government can be uh, a little too imposing and this and that, but we should have checks and balances. We were set up that way. Right. And if the system works the way it's supposed to, we'll be okay. And I, I live in a different kind of a neighborhood, <laughs> and everybody has a gun. Mm-hmm. But um, we had a, a young man murdered on the street up from where I live with an AK-47 with an 80-round clip. And they don't know where the rifle is. The young lady that had used it to to mm-hmm. murder this man, uh, it was nowhere to be found. It wasn't in the house, it wasn't in the yard, 
they check dumpsters. Mm. So, you know, there's an AKA running oh around gosh. out there, yeah. and nobody knows where. And gun control, I, I agree wholeheartedly with a very dis- lengthy process before you are licensed <clears throat> yes. to even own a gun. Mm-hmm. And then I would like to see it where you needed training on how to, to properly use the gun and what do you want to use it for and, you know, get get deeper into the, um, the uh, situation knowing who's going to be using this gun. Um, and, and guns don't kill people. People kill people. That's what they say. And um, you have to, I have to remind that yeah. myself that quite a bit. Right. And uh, there's no way we can check. I mean, some people can do some horrible things without any weapon at all. Right. And um, so maybe we just shouldn't be picking on the gun carriers, but what about the, the ones that carry, you know, their knives or razor knives or anything like that? Um, yeah. I mean, I understand it's opening a can of worms, but uh, and I think it boils down to, like you said, it's the people. We've, we've, mm-hmm. we've got to... Um, you know, if, if you're insane, you probably don't need any kind of weapon. <laughs> you know, if you're homicidal or, you know, you probably, you probably don't need a weapon. Uh, I think I'd have a better chance at trying to fiend somebody off of me if they didn't have a weapon, you know, mm-hmm. and they were crazy. And I don't know. I would like to see on the application – you know, what are you going to be using this AK-47 for, the AR-15 or whatever? Yeah, I, see, I what would you write any down? for those kind of exactly. guns to be out there at all. <laughs> sorry. That's just I'm me. Sorry. sorry. I mean, shotgun, a handgun, you know, if you want to have those to protect your home or you want to have a shotgun or, you know, rifle to go hunting with. But, you know, these assault rifles and automatic weapons, I mean, yeah. right. I just don't see it. That's me. I don't see it. Right. No they were made for dis, d- destruction. destruction. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Mass destruction right. and killing. Um, it's made for, sad to say, wars. Yeah. Um, uh, like a riot situation. Mm-hmm. Maybe if you had a bunch of zombies <laughs> trying to attack you, you know, you would need one. Um, <laughs> hopefully we won't have to go through that. But And, and there are so many different sides to this argument. Right. And I, I respect people that... I have a side to it, but I mean, we got to use a little common sense. And while we're talking about rights, there was another yeah, go um, ahead little topic. Um, there was a rapper, um, Rick Ross, who had some lyrics in a song that he ended up getting fired from Reebok as their spokesman for. And he later apologized, but the lyrics in the song had to do with giving a girl a molly in her drink and then um, molly or ecstasy in her drink and then she'd have no knowledge and he could take her home and have his way with her and it'd be fun. Wow. Basically. And I'm not quoting the lyrics for yeah. verbatim. Um, and he said he apologized. He said that the lyrics are offensive and it doesn't reflect his true heart and that before he's an artist, he's a father, a brother, you know, a son... Um, that's a cop out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm sorry. No, uh, he's you, a you sang the lyrics. You, you, you whether you wrote them or not, you sang mm-hmm. them. Exactly. You didn't think about them until you got the axe. That's right. Yeah. That's, that, right. that's my two cents. You didn't yeah. think about it until you got the axe. You didn't think about the fa- mm-hmm. you were a father, or you were a son, mm-hmm. or you, you know, no. you think about making money. That's right. You sang the lyrics, uh, and it, you know, it condones. Raping a woman. Yeah, violence against women. You know, women not having yeah. a choice because she's been popped a pill to where she doesn't make a consenting choice. She isn't in the right mind. So, I, I don't know about y'all, but... That just rubs you the wrong way. Yep. Kimberly, you, you, right off the bat, you said that was a cop-out. Why? That, that's much crap. Sit there and say, <laughs> well, that's not how I feel. I'm just singing it. It's <laughs> yeah. ridiculous. It is ridiculous. I'm, I'm glad the company took a stand, though, and... and said no that's good and and i'm I'm sad to say that he apologized when he realized he's going to get in trouble for it but (laughs) 
But at least the company did take a stand against what he was doing. So. Yes. What is the dude that, that y'all, your children, uh, Gangnam Style or whatever? Oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, did, he had a little issue, I think. He had a song, a previous song that said things about, uh, I don't know if it was about, I'm just making this up now. It was about either the United States or it was about South Korea. I, I don't know, but it was about a country. Uh, I want to say United States and you know, people called him out on it, and he apologized. And he said, yeah, that was a long time ago, and I shouldn't have done it. And But that hasn't, you know, cost him anything because, I mean, he's got the number one uh, video on YouTube, and every time I watch your children, my grandchildren. Yeah, they go nuts, I know. Oh, it's always this whatever it is We style. were at field day at my kid's school, and they played it, and they're like 80 <laughs> kids yeah. doing the Oh, so, I, But I, I hear, like, Obama gang, Gangnam Style. I hear Looney Tunes, the uh, Care Bears, the <laughs> oh, it's just everyone and mm. oh, so, somebody over that. I don't yeah. know. What about you? And you know, Christian can do it really <laughs> well, can he? The, he can. He's good at it. Yeah. Yeah. And if you do it, it, it is pretty aerobic. It's good for weight loss. But, but no, I mean after forty five hundred times, it's yeah, you're oh. kind of tired. Yeah. Of I'm, Rachel, <laughs> Rachel will get the iPad out and she'll play the song and after about two or three times i'm like okay that's enough we need to listen to something else or do something else <laughs> yeah it, it just uh anyway if i don't hear that for 10 years i'll be okay after this weekend <laughs> but anywho nothing against you Cy. but uh he's got a new um song out or a new video or something they say he does some pretty uh, I watched first half of it before I couldn't stomach it anymore. <laughs> really? Yeah, I didn't care for it at all. Is it suggestive or what? It's just defense. Um, he's uh, the only English that he was speaking was "I'm a gentleman," but then he was being rude to people. Ah. Uh, and it was just kind of ironic, sarcastic. I guess which um, Gangnam Style is kind of supposed to be ironic, but. If I'm going to let my kids sing something in Korean, I, I translate the lyrics first. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, that's And good. I didn't find the lyrics to be offensive. Um, somebody's got a different translation they may have. I don't know. But, but And I didn't translate this song because the video was offensive. And mm, gotcha. Yeah. But that's, can't tell any more than that because, like I said, I shut it off after about halfway through. <laughs> that's a good mom. Mm. That'll... <laughs> do that but instead of letting your kids just and both of y'all are very good about uh you know previewing things yeah and, i don't like rachel to get on the computer or the you know the tablet uh, ipad iphone and just randomly look up youtube stuff and because you know yeah, you people know. can just put whatever on there and, and be on youtube's home page <laughs> yeah <laughs> that is true <laughs> oh <tries>, sweetheart <laughs> oh what well, well, we don't have time, but that's the subject we'll talk about next week about this family that uh, they were on a, a trip from somewhere to, I think, Colorado, when the, the movie on the plane was um, inappropriate for the, their age children, and then they actually had a yeah, situation yeah, and, yeah. and got taken off the plane. But we'll talk about that next week. And okay. so Kathy will be joining us again next week. Thank you. And we had a great time with you. Thank and I uh, thank you for your thoughts and opinions, and we will see you all next week. Hey, oh, let me say this. And real quick, stay tuned for the rest of our shows all day. And tonight, Dr. Jones and I will be hosting um, Jim Brayshaw and his wife, Angela. And we will be talking, or they will. Uh, Jim wrote a book about uh, Satan. And I'm not going to do a spoiler alert, but he'll either tell you that he does exist, Satan that is, or he does not. So tune in at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time here at The Place. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>